Hello, my name is Steve Karakula, and I'm the Senior Director of Product Marketing for Hillstone Networks. And we are very pleased to have you here to listen to this webinar on breach detection. Now, I know some of you are not familiar with Hillstone Networks, so allow me to give you a little background. Hillstone Networks was founded by several NetScreen visionaries back in 2006. And they built some world-class teams with backgrounds in security, big data analytics, and networking. And our product is a next-generation firewall that provides visibility and control of your applications, your users and groups, content, and threats. However, we like to say we have an intelligent next-generation firewall, and I'll show you why in a couple of slides. Hillstone Networks has several innovations in data mining and correlation analysis for threat detection, and we have 36 patents in multi-core security architecture. And we have a fairly large customer base. We have over 8,000 customers. Most of them are in Asia-Pac. As a matter of fact, we are number two in firewall sales in China. But we are rapidly moving into North America, South America, and Europe. And we are very proud to say that Gartner has put us on their magic quadrant. Now, when you are placed on Gartner's magic quadrant for the first time, you are generally placed in the bottom left-hand corner. However, we are very pleased with this placement because we are far to the right in that corner, indicating we have a visionary status amongst some of our competitors. And as time goes by, we expect to move even further to the right and further up. Now, earlier I said we like to call ourselves an intelligent next generation firewall. So let me explain why. We have all the features and functions of a traditional firewall with some additions. So we can prevent malicious downloads like all traditional firewalls through our intrusion prevention and antivirus. And we can prevent exploits of vulnerabilities, again, through our intrusion prevention or antivirus. And we can block access to malicious websites through our URL filtering. And because we are application aware, we can also block dangerous applications. But where we add real value is in our ability to detect and block infected hosts and to be able to monitor your network 24-7 to look for the anomalies that may be occurring on your network and your network health. And I'll explain more about this as we go on. So let's get into this presentation and let's start by looking at today's security realities. If you happen to have watched CBS's 60 Minutes on October 5th of this year, you would have seen FBI Director James Comey make this statement. He said that there are two types of companies, those that have been hacked and those that don't know it yet. Now, to understand this comment and to put it into perspective, you really have to understand how much malware is actually roaming the Internet today and how easy it is to become compromised. So let's take a quick look at that. Earlier this year, Panda Security put out a report that said they are seeing or harvesting 160,000 new malware samples every single day. Now, that equates to 15 million new samples per quarter, or about 60 million new samples per year. No antivirus company can write 60 million signatures in one year. That is an enormous amount of malware. And this is a conservative estimate. I have heard other antivirus vendors claim that they're seeing upwards of 300,000 new samples on a daily basis. Now, combine the fact that there is so much malware out there on the Internet with the fact that it's so easy to become infected. All it takes normally is one click. And there are a lot of things to click on. There's social engineering out there, phishing attacks that try to deceive you into clicking on malicious web links, or perhaps a cloaked executable like a 
.jpg file, or perhaps an infected web document like a, a Word file or an Excel file. Or perhaps somebody has loaned you a USB drive that has an infection in it. Or maybe you're just looking at Facebook or LinkedIn because a lot of web applications are now infected with malware. Or perhaps you're just browsing the internet and you stopped at a website that gave you a drive-by download of malicious code. Or perhaps you're just a little bit late in patching your operating system or your browser and a zero-day attack has taken place and you haven't done anything. So the point is, there is a ton of malware out there and many ways to become infected. Now here's the real problem. According to Verizon's 2014 data breach investigation report, 66% of breaches remain undetected for months. Now that's a long time for the bad guys to be inside your network, roaming around, infecting other machines, gaining administrative privileges, and stealing your confidential information. And here's another sad fact from this report. 87% of the breaches are discovered by external parties. That means the company that has been compromised doesn't know it until their customers tell them, or their partner, or perhaps law enforcement. This is a sad state of affairs, folks. So what does this mean for a network administrator that has to protect potentially thousands of host computers and servers? Well, it means the game has changed. There are new rules. You cannot prevent all attacks. Traditional signature-based security is largely ineffective, but it is still required. And all organizations will have infected hosts. It also means that malware identification is no longer about what the file looks like. It is now about what it does. And the administrator needs to have a new set of goals. He can't think in terms of blocking an attack. He has to think in terms of mitigating the damage. He has to shorten the time between compromise and detection. He has to prevent the attack from succeeding or executing. And he has to prevent the attack from spreading. And where he can, he has to remediate the attack. He has to determine the root cause of the attack so that he can prevent that attack from reoccurring. We believe this requires a new strategy. We believe you must monitor your network to look for abnormal behavior. So that means you're going to have to use machine learning to establish a baseline of what is normal on your network. And then you're going to need big data analytics and mathematical modeling to detect anomalous behavior. But in addition to that, you're going to need to monitor your endpoints and use something like statistical clustering to identify families of malware and vector analysis to find known patterns of malware behavior. And let me explain this here in the next couple of slides. At Hillstone Networks, we believe you need a quick, real-time indication of the status of your network health. What we mean by that is you need to know the status of your business services, your security threats, device resources, and your network availability. It has to be a real-time indication of the evolving threats and security risks on your network. So in the bottom left-hand corner, we see a network health index of 100. This is an ideal condition. This means your network is running just fine. But more often than not, something is going to go wrong on your network. And on the right-hand side, you can see a network health index of 57. Now, when you see something like that, it's incumbent upon you to investigate immediately to see what's happening. So let me give you some exa examples of what that might look like. Now, here we see an example where the network health index dropped to 57. Uh, this is a real example. It came from China Mobile. And the reason it dropped to uh, 57 was that a major server was unavailable, or it had a latency of almost 4 seconds, 4,000 milliseconds. Now, it turned out that this device was not under attack, but it had a bad I.O. board. But nevertheless, this is the kind of information you need to have so you can take immediate action. Now, here is a different example of a real attack. 
And let me explain what we're looking at here. The blue line shows that something is occurring around 1607 that is out of bounds. Uh, the lower green line would be the low threshold that would be acceptable for traffic. The gold line is your baseline value and the purple line is your high value. So anything between the purple and the green would be acceptable. But as you can see, we have a parameter and it's the active inbound sessions that became way out of bounds. So that's an indication that something is wrong. Now, if we look at the next slide here, this is new inbound sessions per second. And we can see that at exactly the same time, the new inbound sessions per second is also out of parameter, out of bounds. So we have two parameters that don't make sense. So the system will issue an alert, and let me show you what that might look like. So here we have an alert that was the result of these two parameters being out of bounds. And you can see it's a high severity alert, and it is a DOS attack. So if you are a network administrator, you would probably want to change your firewall policy to block that particular IP address that is sending the attack. And now I'll show you one more type of attack. And this attack is occurring at 2 a.m. And you can see very clearly that something is happening because it's way out of bounds. And it turned out the alert was because there was an exfiltration of data. So that exfiltration was occurring between 2 a.m. and it looks like 7 a.m. Uh, so there would have been all sorts of alerts ringing uh, during the, that period of time. So what I was showing you uh, was how we monitor your network. Now let's talk about monitoring your endpoints. We like to use statistical clustering, and let me explain what that is. We are looking for recurring combinations of actors, actions, assets, and attributes that are strongly related. And when I say strongly related, I mean they occur together in the same incidents and are distinct in some way from other combinations. Now, statistical clustering aggregates these incidents, and then we calculate the, numer the numeric distance between them. And I think the best way to describe this is through a picture. So let's go to the next slide. So here's a picture of what we're really doing. We take known malware, and we feed it into our cloud-based sandbox. And we do an analysis on this malware and determine which family it closely is related to. So we have taken many thousands, many tens of thousands of malware, analyzed them, and placed them into families. We currently have somewhere between three and 4,000 families that we've identified. Then when we see malware performing in a similar way on your network, we can identify the family pretty quickly, as a matter of fact, and we can take action to mitigate the damage. Let me give you an example of that through another picture. Okay, here's an example of some binaries that we recently caught. The top is, some, is a polymorphic binary. It is something that is a zero-day attack. We have never seen it before. However, there are some similarities to another virus that we have seen before. It's the win32.kate.b virus. And if you look at the peer ID, you'll see the peer ID in this new virus matches the peer ID in the win32.kate virus. And the port IDs are also the same. And to uh, make matters even more concrete, if you look at the communications port that it's using, it's using port 6969. Well, that's a very unusual port to be sending HTTP traffic through. So, all of these things together leads us to believe that this is a variant of the win32.kate.b virus. And now we know quite a bit about what this virus does. And in fact, we can block it in its tracks. So let me talk a little bit now about how you stop malware. Most malware first installs a downloader into a compromised host. And the downloader then communicates with a command and control domain to get the latest and greatest attack code. So if you can find that command and control domain and you can block that IP address, you can put the malware or the downloader out of business. So a lot of vendors have a blacklist of known IP addresses. 
But there's a real problem here with that. Uh, there's something called domain generating algorithms, and I'll get into that in a minute. And what that means is their IP addresses disappear rather quickly. As a matter of fact, Dombala software claims they see roughly 700,000 new domains every single day, and that more than half of them are gone after one day. So what's going on here? Well, malware developers are very sneaky in terms of their command and control. They can attack and compromise legitimate sites and then use that as a command and control center. Or they can open hundreds of links to legitimate sites to obfuscate where that command and control site really is. Or more generally, they are using a domain generating algorithm to do something called domain fluxing. Now let me explain what that is. So here's a picture of how domain fluxing works. The idea behind a domain generating algorithm is that if two parties, the victim and the threat actor, have the same algorithm and use the same input, well then the output will also be the same. So after a device becomes infected with a domain generating algorithm, it is programmed to go to a legitimate website to retrieve a piece of information. And on that same day, the threat actor will also visit that same site and retrieve the same piece of information. The input received goes into an algorithm and it generates, let's say, mm, a thousand random domain names. The threat actor inputs the same data into his algorithm and generates the same 1,000 random domain names. Then he just picks one out of the thousand and registers it with an IP address. So then the infected device queries a DNS server for all 1,000 domains. 999 of them will return a non-existent domain response, meaning there is no IP address associated with it. But one domain will be registered with an IP address. The infected device can now connect to the command and control server using that one live domain with that IP address. Now, here's the good news. When it's trying all 1,000 domains out there, if you're a firewall, you can see that, and you can, in fact, block it. But there are other techniques for blocking as well. Let me explain. Now, based on the severity of the attack, uh, the confidence we have in the attack, and how the administrator has set up his system, we can use multiple attack mitigations. So an example would be bandwidth restriction. So for example, maybe an attack has just begun. The administrator wants to look at it, but he doesn't want the attack to, to be completed before he has a chance to look at it. So one strategy would be to restrict the bandwidth so the network becomes very slow for that attack victim. Or perhaps as you move up the scale, you would start to reduce the privileges that victim has, so he could no longer reach sensitive servers or maybe even reach out to the internet. And finally, the last stage of mitigation would be to fully quarantine the device so there's nothing he can do. And of course, then the administrator would re-image the device. With a next generation firewall, there are multiple things you can do depending on how the administrator sets it up. Now let me say a final word about threat mitigation and remediation. Once the threat is under control, you're going to want to remediate, find the root cause of the attack. You're going to want to understand the attack timeline, how the malware got into your network, you want to understand if it proliferated to other devices, and what information, if any, was exfiltrated. So Hillstone provides a whole series of forensic tools to help you make that analysis. Uh, one of the things that we provide are PCAP files that provide visibility into the multiple stages of the attack. And because we can group malware into families, we know a lot of information about that malware, even though it may be a zero-day attack. So we can provide you detailed descriptions of the malware and what it actually did. 